Hello and welcome back to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the changes in Reaper 5.96 and 5.961. 5.96 was mostly a bug fix update, but there were a couple things in this update that I wanted to show uh, once I had another you know, bunch of updates to show along with it. So the first one is effects paste after currently selected item in effects chain rather than end of list. Uh, I'm going to open up the, the effects chain for these two tracks. So track one and track two. I'm going to copy this recomp, and you can just do that with Command C on Mac or Control C on PC. I could also do it from the um, copy and paste actions. And so if I select re-EQ as uh, the selected item and I hit paste, it's going to put that pasted effects after the last selected one, rather than always going at the end of the list. So up until 5.96, they would always go, pasted effects would always go at the end of the list, and now they go after the last selected one. So I can do that again, copy, go here, and put it after re I'll paste, and it puts it right after the last selected one. It's really simple, but it's a nice thing. It's more intuitive. It works more how you would expect it to work. If you remember in 5.95, they added in these arm next action functions, uh, these meta action that they call them. In this update, they've added the ability to toggle the arming of the next action. So rather than just having arm and disarm actions, you can now have a toggle. So it will just flip whatever state that next action was. So there we go, action toggle arm of next action. And check out my video on 5.95 update for more information about that function. All right, so onto the 5.961 update. All the changes from here on are about re-EQ and re-X comp. So re-EQ, fix phase cancellation error, improve phase display range. We can enable the phase display using this button at the bottom, show phase. And so that adds in this red line. And as we move points, we can see um, how the phase changes in degrees as we add EQ. This is not a linear phase EQ, so any changes we make can cause phase changes and that is going to affect the audio. Any non-linear phase EQ is going to have this and it's just kind of part of the sound of the EQ. Uh, so if we have this on like a notch, it'll look like this. This isn't used by a lot of people, but for those that do use it, it's more accurate now. Next is alt click band to remove, control mouse wheel to find adjust width. So these are fantastic updates. So we can alt click to delete any of the points that are added. And if we want to use the mouse wheel to adjust the bandwidth, we can hold down uh, Control on PC or Command on Mac, and now the bandwidth will move extra slow, more precisely. Um, really great, uh, because before it used to be just the speed, which is a little bit quick for precise movements. So hold down Command on the Mac or Control on the PC and move the mouse wheel, and you can have more fine bandwidth control there. Double clicking in the empty area adds a new band, a notch, shelf, high pass, or low pass, which is pretty awesome. So I can just double click here, and right away a uh, band shape filter is put in there. Uh, I can double click to bypass, or I can alt click to disable it. If I go up to the top range of the EQ, it's going to put in a high shelf. If I go down to the bottom area, is going to put in a low pass. If I go down below um, around this area, it's going to put in a notch so that the threshold of, of doing that is somewhere around here, around minus 18 or so. So we can just all click to delete those. And the same goes for this side. If I go up here, it's going to put in a low shelf and down here. It's going to put in a filter. So that's a lot quicker. Really intuitive. We've seen this sort of behavior in other plugins, and this is working really well. Huge, awesome update for ReQ. 
So we can uh, hold down Control Shift or Command Shift and adjust in fine increments the bandwidth as we drag. So I can do this with here, Control Shift or Command Shift, as I said, and move left or right, and that's going to adjust the bandwidth. So instead of using the mouse wheel, like I showed earlier, you can drag. I think that works really well. The next function is kind of more for touch screens, and we can increase the size of the band handles. So you right click in anywhere in the grid, and you'll see this option, large band handles. And so these points, they may not make sense to have large points when you're using the mouse, but imagine if this is a touch screen, it makes it a lot easier to grab and adjust these uh, EQ points. Next, there are three different analyzer slope settings. 0 dB, 3 dB, and 4.5 dB per octave. I'm just gonna play back something here, uh, which you won't hear because I'm not recording the audio. But this is the 0, this is the 3 dB, and the 4.5. So 0 dB was the default there. Maybe not something that everyone uses, but it is super helpful to have these different options so that the analyzer in ReEQ works more like how um, things like span or other analyzers work. A nice little option there and the default functionality doesn't change in any way. All right, so now we're looking at ReX Comp and some of the changes that went into ReEQ also apply here. So the first one is being able to double click to bypass one of the bands in ReX Comp. So this is toggling this active uh, button in the lower section, but we don't have to have the tabs open now, so we can actually double click that to bypass. We can also shift double click to solo, so it'll bypass the other bands, or, or actually it's, it's just toggling this button here at the bottom. Uh, but without having to move your mouse so far, it's pretty nice. Next is they've improved the band insertion behavior and inserting band on double click. So if we have band two selected and I use this button, add band, it's going to insert a band at the top range of uh, the last one that I had selected, which is really nice. But also we can double click to insert a new band. So I'm gonna double click around 16K. And so it's put in a band there where I clicked it. And like I showed in re-EQ, large band handles, that's now available, as well as the three different analyzer slope settings. This is all great stuff, really awesome update. As always, there's more room for improvement, so if you have any suggestions for what they should do, get over to the Reaper forum, participate in the betas, and put in your feature requests. Their attention is on this stuff right now, so there's a good chance that more improvements like this will be able to be implemented quickly if you just speak up. So that's it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.